I just thought, how funny would it be if there was a talk show where the talk show host, that was his temp job, and he brought like apathy and indifference to a talk show host position. The Eric Andre show is an absurd and hilarious take on the late night talk show, taking the form of a crazed, bizarre fever dream that has earned it a cult following around the globe. But while a lot of people find it funny, most don't give creator Eric Andre enough credit for just how clever it really is. Uh, do you think Margaret Thatcher had girl power? Yes, of course. Do you think she effectively utilized girl power by funneling money to illegal paramilitary death squads in Northern Ireland? I don't know about that. From the show's satirical representation of the late night talk show format to its social and political commentary, along with its deconstruction of celebrity culture and American television in its showcase of absurdist and nihilist comedy, there's a lot to unpack here. Interviews can last between 45 minutes and an hour. The yeah. reason why we shoot for so long is because celebrities aren't used to being in the hot seat for such an extended period of time. Their defenses just start breaking down and you start seeing the person behind the facade. We call it pinwheeling, like when your computer phrases. As Eric Andre puts it in his interview with Larry King. I, I, I set out to make the worst talk show of all time. That's what I wanted to do. And you succeed. And I succeeded. A talk show is generally structured around humorous monologues about the day's news, guest interviews, comedy sketches, and musical performances. In this sense, The Eric Andre Show checks all the boxes. But a talk show is really, at its core, a cult of personality around the host. The host fundamentally shapes the talk show, acting as its trademark. And so, to appeal to an audience of millions, most talk show hosts are well-groomed and inoffensive, with audiences that lap up statements that barely constitute jokes. What did the horse say to the scarecrow? Hey! <laughs> Eric Andre flips the script, crafting a talk show that is designed to look cheap and unpolished, playing a character that is as far away from the mild, bland and innocuous show host as possible. In this way, Andre's show is satirical, using irony, ridicule and exaggeration to expose the stupidity and vices of the bland, agreeable talk show format itself. Were so you a fan of talk shows? I was a fan of like anti-talk show talk shows. Anti -talk. Through this, Andre begins to deconstruct American televisual and celebrity culture. The canned laugh track during Andre's show deliberately mimics the gormless audiences of late night talk shows who cheer and applaud for any reason. The interviews are arguably the most important aspect of the show. Andre's show doesn't provide celebrities the safe haven that most talk shows do. For most celebrities, the talk show is nothing more than a platform for good publicity, a way to tell a funny story and answer a few easy questions in front of an audience of millions, walking away with good PR. But Andre's show doesn't do this. It refuses to worship celebrities, and instead provides a platform to take them down a notch. As Ricky Gervais says at the 2012 Golden Globes, Nervous? Don't be. This isn't about you. The most important thing for Andre is the viewer. It's not about the celebrity, it's about poking fun at celebrities for the sake of comedy, to make the viewer laugh. And in this way, Andre manages to deconstruct the pedestal celebrities are put on worldwide. When the celebrity's guard is down, the viewer begins to witness pop culture and celebrity status for what it really is, a fabrication. It's ironic that in our modern media world, the only way to get this level of truth from people of fame is through Andre's unpredictable, bizarre talk show that upsets the status quo and exposes the true characters of these celebrities. This is all done through the show's use of absurdism and nihilism. Absurdism in philosophy was largely developed by Albert Camus. At its most basic, absurdism argues that the search for meaning in life is futile, demonstrating the conflict between the human tendency to seek inherent value and meaning in life and the inability to find any in a chaotic, meaningless, and irrational universe. The Eric Andre Show uses absurdist comedy throughout. From the opening monologues, Andre's destruction of his own set during the opening credits, the shocking street pranks that punctuate the show, and the pure anarchy of the post credit scenes. Andre manages to encapsulate and imitate the full spectrum of American television on his talk show, parodying musicians' appearances, cooking shows, prank shows, stand-up comedy shows, the prevalence of a live studio audience, traumatic news events, the list goes on. 
Andre is really demonstrating the audience's desensitization to televisual media, deconstructing how accustomed we have become to engaging with predictable and formulaic media tropes by satirizing the content in an absurdist fashion. The Eric Andre show does credit to absurdist philosophy in its celebration of chaos and meaninglessness, disassembling celebrity culture and the American talk show in the process, and thus finding comedy in the darkest corners of philosophical thought within the meaninglessness of existence itself. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments below. Subscribe and turn on notifications and look out for my next upload.